guys, it's Rich from Team CFG, and today I'm joined by the Mr. Fire, aka Andy. I'm allowed to say that now, aren't I? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, got it. There you, you go. There you go. Shameless plug. I tell you what, these plugs are. There you go. Brilliant. I left this right. Go. That's better. Oh, that's better. Is that right. Like, you're Sorry, right. you were saying. So I was just saying. Um, obviously, I'm going to introduce you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure most people know it. Um, but um, this is the missing flight, aka Andy. I'm allowed to say that. You are indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Generally, yeah, didn't yeah. know for a second. Um, I mean, it's probably the, one of the UK's biggest motor vloggers. That's for sure. That sounds um, impressive, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Oh, I'm wow. going to big you up here. We're going to build Thank it you up very and much. as the interview goes. We'll oh, okay, you're going to just slap crash. me down. Okay, um, so, uh, how would you like to introduce yourself, Andy? Far away. Uh, well, I should say I'm the missing flyer. I have a uh, motorcycle vlog I do all sorts of stuff I don't just do stuff on the bike but I do stuff here in the garage as well uh, occasionally get the spanners out but that often goes wrong uh, which some people like uh, I do trips and tours product reviews basically you name it anything and everything to do with bikes I try and cover it on the channel exactly that I know that because I've known you for about Four years when you come out around. Time flies, it's amazing. Yes, yeah, man, I've just grown a beard. I don't, yeah, I don't it's looking very good about actually. it. Thank you. Oh, you've got beard I'm trying to get because I'm doing so many motorcycle interviews. I thought I'll get into it. They've all so got At least beards. people will, will presume I might own a motorcycle. Actually, I just own a. This is where I'm missing a trip. See, I can't actually there cultivate a beard. Yeah, I'm sure you look better than mine. I'm sure. Don't think Mine's a bit scraggly. No, I did once. But someone did call me Conor McGregor in the comments on the last one, so I'll take that. I'll take that. And. So let's yeah, let's smash into it. I have got okay. help all the time. Um, so what's your first ever bike you've ever owned and kind of what was your age as well? Uh, well, I've always been interested in bikes, but uh, I am a bit of a born again biker to be fair. But my first bike I ever had an interest in was known as the Consort Machine because it was a consortium of us that bought it. Right. I was about 12. And okay. uh, no, actually that's a lie, I wasn't 12. I used to, I used to ride bikes around the field when I was a kid. Uh, in those days before phones and stuff, you used to just ride around the fields, and that was great fun. But I never owned one, that was always pals, old fizzies and things like that, right. 50cc bikes, that was great. Uh, and then I think it was when I was uh, in my student years, so I was probably about 22, when we bought the consort machine, which we bought from a fate in Thames Ditton. It was an old moped that uh, didn't run, and I think we put together a tenner each, it's 30 quid. Uh, and we spent all day kicking the thing over trying to get it to run and eventually, I don't know how, we managed to get it to run. Right. Uh, we bundled it in the back of my old Ford Escort and we used to go around the woods again and recreate what I did when I was 12 and on the fizzy. Yeah, yeah. So that was the first one, I guess, uh, which I actually had a financial interest in. And then, um, uh, because when I was a kid, when I was doing it around the fields earlier than that, my parents wouldn't let me have a bike. You know, back in those days, yeah. you, you could buy a, you know, at 16, you could have a 50cc moped. Right. But all my mates had a but I wasn't that one, so that. being a bit of a creepy type. Yeah, but, uh, we've really made good. up for that. I, yeah, exactly. So I didn't have one, and then um, I went around that time when I was a student. It was around the time I met my girlfriend, my now wife, um, and I said to her, "I'm going to get a bike," and she said, "Well, get a bike and cheerio me." So that all. You know, at that time, women were more important than bikes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, how things have changed. And um, so I didn't get one. And then uh, I got to about 30 and I said, I'm going to get a bike. I really do need a bike. And she said, oh, forget it, bike or it's me or a bike. I was like, mm, okay. Still. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. So then I got a Ford. I thought, I really am an adult now. It's time that I should, uh, you know, be able to make my own decision. I said, look, I'm 40 years old. I can, I can make my own decision. I'm going to get a bike. She said, well, if you get a bike, I'm off. Anyway, I bought a bike. <laughs> She she lingered. Lingered. At that point, he was going to make the sacrifice. She lingered around. I thought, interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I was going to get another bike. And she said, well, don't push your luck. Anyway, I've, now got, I've had four bikes ever since for about the last 10 years. Um, and she's still here. So it's all, and in yeah, fact, she's, she's even started right. riding on the back. So there oh, we go. There you go. I can't remember what the original question was. Didn't I answer it? No, no, that's about right. That was about right. So, well, I've already asked this. I was going to say, how did you get into riding? But we've covered that. But yeah. I guess, um, so when you got this bike at around 40 years old, what made you then say, actually, you know what, I'm going to start filming uh, my use on it? Yeah, um, well, it didn't start like that, really. It was, uh, it was odd. I've always been interested in photography. Um, ever since a kid, I had my first single and reflex. Um, so I've always enjoyed photography. I've always been a bit of a computer geek. Right. Um, and around about that time, um, GoPros and action cameras were starting to come on the market. And uh, my main hobbies were biking, flying light airplanes, and skiing. Uh, and I thought, hang on, these are all bits, they sound sort of action man y type things, don't they? Which is incredible because I'm not an action <laughs> yeah. man type at all. But I thought, I've probably got enough of these things that I could justify buying an action camera and I'll make some films of skiing and stuff and teach okay. myself how to edit because I'd done the photography. Yeah. I thought it'd be nice to learn how to edit with a video camera because yeah. I'd never done that before. So um, I started to make some little films and I put them on YouTube to show my parents and friends basically and they started to watch them and then I found that over time that the, the bike ones started to get some other people watching them, people I didn't know who they were and they would make comments and stuff and it was all very interesting, I thought this is odd. But the flying and the skiing ones, nah, absolutely nada, other than me mum, which was fine. So anyway, uh, 
after maybe a few months of doing that, I thought I might as well just focus on the on the bike ones because that started to get a bit of traction. I'd had maybe like 100 subscribers plus. Okay, which is yeah. more than I ever thought I'd ever get. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll make it a bike channel. I think that was back in about, first ever video I put up in about 2008, um, when I wasn't really thinking that this is gonna be become a thing. Um, and then uh, ran with the bike thing for a couple of years. I was just posting maybe a video every two or three weeks, something like that. Right, yeah. Started to get a little bit of traction. And then um, about uh, two, 2016, October 2016, I thought I might have enough money that I could possibly retire. Right. Uh, which, uh, which I didn't dare kind of hope would be the case, but I thought oh, maybe I'll get away with this. And I thought if, you know, if I could just uh, make this YouTube thing a bit better, I could maybe make a little bit of money on the side and I'd be able to make enough money to retire. And anyway, long story short, that, that happened quite quickly. Once I started to focus all my time on it, uh, which I do now pretty I've much. Seen I mean, set up, yeah, well, I'm exactly. Sure I mean, it's not it's not my job it. as such because I don't make my living out of it. But um, I will make a few quid, which is an extra bonus. Yeah. But I'll do it because I fundamentally enjoy it because I like to be creative. Bit, yeah. In my previous professional life, I wasn't really creative at all. This is a great creative outlet. I really enjoy the editing process. Um, I enjoy the photography side. What I don't enjoy is the. Um, the sort of business aspects of it drive right. a bit nuts because that feels a bit too much like work. Yeah. Um, which I desperately try to avoid. But the Wisdom Fly came because actually you fly. Yeah. Aircraft yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. it wasn't yeah. because. Well, it was a two. When I thought to myself, what am I going to call myself? I thought because of the skiing and the flying and the biking, they're all relatively speed is involved in that. Yeah. So you're sort of flying along, aren't you? Yeah. And in my mind, I had this image of like Victorian trains, you know, like the Flying Scotsman and stuff. <laughs> Fast trains and that always sort of were called something fly, weren't they? Yeah. I live in Great Missenden. I thought Missenden fly, that seems to work for the bikes, yeah. planes and what have you. Yeah. And also it's a good time with the, with the piloting thing. So yeah. yeah, that's where that came exactly. from there. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And um, so yeah, I mean, when I met you four years ago, you're on yeah. about 15,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And now you're looking at what, to, to this day, 117. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Um, Incredible, What do you think, was there a part where it just suddenly blew up a little bit? Or a specific time where it just seemed to accelerate, like you thought, bloody hell, actually, this is growing at quite uh, a fast You're looking at tip me for your own channel, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, not really. Yeah. I think, unfortunately, it's sort of a long haul game this yeah. as I say my first video was 2008 Jesus. here we are 11 years later is that right? yeah although I've only been doing it more seriously for the last two years um, but it has been that two years has been a constant so when I started doing it more seriously I maybe had 35 40,000 subscribers at that right point, and yeah. now I've got almost another hundred on top of that in, yeah. in a couple of years but that has been because of consistently putting out putting content out videos yeah content exactly content well. there was no real some people get very lucky um, and particularly in other genres, I mean, motorcycle is a very small niche show. It's a very a small number of people that are going to watch stuff. But um, some people get lucky and get something that goes viral, um, and that would launch you. I had one that wasn't viral, but I had one video that sort of launched my channel and got me a lot of subscribers, which was when I got stopped by the police on the mouth for jumping a red light. Right. That one, for some reason, I don't know if it's because my thumbnail had a police car on it. So what me. you're saying is illegal activity starts. I'm not saying that, but okay. it would. That is that I is the case. Um, I mean, but those things you can't plan. It just so happened I had my camera running right. and the police were very nice and I filmed them. Uh, and that one just got lots of views compared to anything. It is now my most viewed videos. It's, it's got nearly a million views That's and crazy. still gets views to this day. And that was an old one. So that sort of launched my channel. I've had one or two others that have done quite well. Yeah. So you might get lucky occasionally, but it, you can't plan them. If it's you, just consistency and good content. If you could plan it? them, then we'd all be making them. Yeah. Wouldn't we? But yeah, I, think, yeah, I think it's the long haul really. Oh, okay. That means I've got to be here in about 10 more years time, probably filming you again. Happy to Hopefully, do so. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Do that. We'll Hopefully, we're in a bigger garage, maybe. Do, do you? Yeah. So, so now that you've hit this kind of bigger status in the sense of YouTube and following, yeah. Anything? I know we've kind of talked about this, but anything kind of that you find that you now find odd, where maybe, like we said, you came to the MCN show with us, and yeah. it was incredible how many were lined up for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which you know, I think all took us by surprise a little bit. People yeah. just wanted to meet and greet and chat. Yeah. Is there anything that now you see like people might kind of? Just notice you, little people. You get a bit of a look, especially at these bike shows. Excuse Don't worry. me, let me just kill that. Oh, well, actually, it's the garage standby. We might have edited this bit out. Hang on. Hello. Alright. These professionals, you're gonna stay. Oh, sorry, the, the, sorry about that. Right. Sorry, where were we? Awesome. No, I'll, I'll go over it and smash it again. So. Yep. Uh, 
hitting over 100k obviously well 117 now yep. subscribers so it means that you've blown up quite a substantial amount especially on YouTube terms yeah um, you know obviously I saw at the MCN show when you came and we did a bit of a meet and greet yeah. like we had a, yeah. a, a, literally a queue for like three hours of people <laughs> yeah. wanting to just say hello and talk yeah, to you and amazing, everything yeah. I mean do you find now that there's especially I guess when you go to the shows you always get maybe people who look at you or you get noticed certain times have you ever been yeah. noticed on the bike or anything oh, yeah, 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 yeah. do you get any kind of those random occasions when you think god I actually I've blown up a bit or the, the channel's blown up a bit more than well absolutely really well I never I never because it wasn't a planned thing anyway I mean it, it's great the way it's gone so yeah. thank you for watching keep going yeah it's, it's great um, so yes is the answer similar answer to that I've been um, I've ridden I've you know, just ridden my bike locally and I, I somebody will pull up to me next to the lights and say you're the Bissenden flyer that's happened a few times which is quite fun uh, and I guess not unexpected if I'm riding in this area on bikes that people recognise in kit that maybe people recognise yeah. so you sort of get that and it's certainly at bike shows um, again, if you're in a bikey area, and and you know I'm a relatively popular YouTuber on, in bikes, then yeah, it's of course I do get. Yeah. So I sort of expect that a bit now. In fact, if it doesn't happen, I'm thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, but it, don't, don't do bike shows. It does, and that's fantastic. It's really nice, and you know most people are really lovely, and that's all great. Uh, also, if I'm at like a bike shop or something, if I just go and take my bike for a service or whatever, um, people nice. tend to come and have a chat, which is good. Sometimes they don't say that they watch me, but I just know that they do because they just because of what they're saying, or they'll eventually admit it. Uh, but that's all great. Um, and even even in strange circumstances, so I was on a tour once in Spain. I was at the top of a mountain, and somebody came over and said, "I was I was watching you in your in my villa last night." I mean, that sort of thing is amazing. Yeah, it's all this and, that. Uh, and then there was one recently, somebody else, somebody. What was it? Oh, the the fellow I was at the local curry house, and uh, the guy the guy that was serving me turned yeah. out. Yeah. That, so yeah, those sort of things are starting to happen more and more. And I do and I do notice sometimes people give me a funny look, and I don't know whether I'm just getting um, yeah, maybe you're getting I'm overreacting or I'm right, thinking, but, right, but yeah. I think that is starting to happen more. Yeah, I don't know what. I mean, it does make you wonder. What if you were properly famous? Yeah, what yeah, would that be like? Because yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's flattery for just a normal fella in the street who knocks out videos out of his garage. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's just amusing. But you know, if you were, I don't know, Madonna or someone, or Lady yeah. Gaga is probably well, the equivalent. I mean, how would you flip? That? It'd just be a nightmare, yeah, I wouldn't it? But then I, don't again. Know, I haven't experienced it quite. Oh, it'll happen. It'll happen. Um, yeah, one day. And yeah, yeah. I, I guess going off that, it's a nice, a really simple tangent here. That so, what made you then? Because for about three years, I think. Everyone who came up to me at the shows and stuff was like, "Oh, um, yeah, I've seen you on the Mist and Flyer. Uh, what's his name, by the way?" Right. And every time I was there, like, "Sorry, it's confidential." <laughs> I felt quite powerful doing it. But, <laughs> but so, what made you actually decide? You know what? Sorry, I'm going to just say my first name, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what, what, what made uh, you kind of just say, "Actually, you know what? I'll just say my." To be honest, it's done. not a secret, and um, it was just getting a bit embarrassing when people were saying, talking to me, you know, calling me TMF all the time. Yeah. So it's more of an embarrassment thing, really. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's not really a secret, so I've no problem with it. Um, so yeah, I've not made a big song and a dance of it. People may have noticed on videos yeah. of Blake, they may have heard my name mentioned, and that's absolutely fine. I was just giving it away. Whereas I didn't used to do it. I just, I, I decided I wasn't going to make a big deal and suddenly tell everyone, yeah, oh, yeah. my name's Andy. Oh. But um, so yeah, it's just really because um, it's got a little bit more serious with some momentum, it was just getting a bit embarrassing. So yeah, I've just gone through that. So um, so obviously, t I was going to say, tell us about your bikes. Obviously, yeah, we'll we've, we've kind of covered that a little okay, bit yeah, anyway, yeah, haven't yeah. we? But obviously, we've got the, right, this is going to be, I'm going to go for it. Panagale. Yep. You've got the street triple. Oh, yeah. Two out of two. Right, yeah, this so is good. Often people obviously. say speed, so that's good. You got and that then right. the 250L, the CRF. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, very there good. Go, Tell it I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> um, so it's nice, though, because you were chatting about how it's, and I think definitely agree, you've got this array of bikes. Yep. So, you know, when you want to do something a bit sportier and on track, you've got this bad yep, boy yep, here. Yep. Um, I'd say that the kind of GS, obviously it's a bit more of a tour, I know, but these kind of relatively similar and kind of standard bikes, you would say, that most people ride on the road. The street triple's uh, pretty yeah, popular, they're all, isn't it? They're, they're all popular bikes, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and for a good reason, because, yeah. you know, well, I'm biased, obviously, I would say, because they, they're great bikes. I mean, the street triple's a fantastic bike. Very great popular, great value, yeah, yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't know if it's Strat's biggest seller, but I'd be surprised if it's not in the top three for sure. So fantastic. I've never seen a bad review of a street triple, so that's, that's yeah. good. Same with the GS. Um, they're they're popular for a reason. Uh, they're just great bikes. The others maybe not so much. I mean, the I, I, I'm very fortunate a bit to be more able niche to run you could for. Call it, yeah, you? exactly. Yes. I mean, I am fortunate in that I can. I've got the space to have four bikes and the money to have four bikes. So I, I realise I'm lucky in that respect. Um, but it's a bit like women with shoes and handbags, isn't it? Um, yeah, you know, you need. It depends on what mood you're in as to yeah. which one you want to ride. Yeah. yeah. Well, with me, I've got trainers. I've got yeah. wellies. I've yeah. got Flip flops when it's a bit hot. Wow. Yeah. And sometimes I don't wear shoes at all inside the house. Oh, there's a little tip there. Exactly. 
there you go. There's a little tangent. I've got to think about feet. <laughs> I don't, I don't it's getting a bit feet. personal now. <laughs> yeah. um, so out the all the bikes you've tested, mm-hmm. not these ones yeah, here, because yeah. again, oh, I think maybe slightly biased. I think I know the question's all the coming. Bikes you've tested. Oh, here we go. What one maybe have you kind of even maybe considered saying I might think about buying this bike? The thing is. Modern bikes are all very good, and one of the things I struggle with is I want to say, find bad things to say about bikes because they're they're all very good these days, yeah. and there's not really a bad new bike out there. Um, so they're all pretty good. And the other thing that surprised me, and also quite pleases me, is that when I do ride a lot of new bikes, which I do, I've ridden most of the new bikes. Um, there are very few that I think, oh, this is absolutely amazing. I must yeah, have one. Out. I often come back and think, well, actually, I still love my street trip or I still love my GS or whatever. So, so that's quite good because it means I don't have to keep. I don't have to keep going out and buying new bikes, which would be very costly. Right. Uh, but there are one or two uh, recently that have stood out that I thought were absolutely amazing. So um, I can't. I can't pick one because there are a few. But there's a few that stick out. One was the Honda, the new Honda Goldwing. I'm not a big cruiser man, that's and, I'll, and yeah. I always thought there's no way I'd have one of them. And I don't think I would necessarily have one because they are big, and there are, there's a point at which you just to have a car it's instead, like on isn't, a it? Sofa, isn't it? But that was an amazing, amazing bike. I, when I knew I was going to ride it, I thought um, this isn't really a bike I'm going to like, but I'm going to ride it because it's a. I've never ridden yeah, one, and I wouldn't ride. get the chance. Yeah. yeah, but within literally hundred yards of riding it, I thought this is the best bike I've ever ridden. It wow. was unbelievable, just in its smoothness, the engine, and everything about it was great. But it's a thirty grand bike, so that's off the list. Yeah. So, so that was an interesting bike. Uh, the next one that uh, blew me away was the big brother of this one, the current um, V4 Panigale. Right. Uh, I had it for a couple of weeks last year. Ducati kindly lent me one to try. And uh, I bought this 899 because I thought this was going to be a more road-friendly bike than the, the big brother at the time, which was the 1199, was a hairy, right. hairy bike. And this was a much better road bike and easier to ride. But the V4 is even easier than this. For someone who doesn't know much about bikes, yep. which I've stated a lot, I'll continue stating, um, is uh, what's the big brother different from this bike? Well, to the uninitiated eye, it looks exactly the same. Okay. Same size, same styling. There's a few minor tweaks to the styling, but it looks the same. But the V4 has got a four cylinder V uh, well, configuration sense, engine. This is just a twin, an L twin. Um, and it's much bigger. So, um, in fact, I can't even remember what size it is now. It's a 12, I think it's a 12, it's a 1299, isn't it? The V4, yeah. Right. Um, but it's got a lot more sophisticated electronics than this. I mean, this has got the ele- electronics that you need, like ABS and traction control, but the V4 has got very clever wheelie control, lean angle sensitive bits and pieces. Wow. Uh, and, it, and it's very um, customizable. It's got very flash suspension and everything else. But the thing with it, despite all the fancy components it's got, uh, it's just very, very easy to ride. So for a, okay. uh, a very fast, you know, 200 mile an hour bike, 200 horsepower, um, but you can get on it, and even a numpty like me who's not a great rider, it made me feel oh, like a great fun. rider. It yeah. was brilliant, yes. Yeah. So that's what made that stand What about there. comfort on a bike like that? I mean, obviously well, I know you're comparing it to God to some of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, sport, sport, let's not kill ourselves, sports bikes aren't yeah. comfortable, are they? But, uh, and it took me a while to, before I got this because I thought it was going to be too uncomfortable to yeah. ride. But actually, once you get used to it, within a week of owning this, my bones were used to it. Yeah. The first time I rode it, I thought, oh, I've made a bit of a mistake here, this is bloody uncomfortable. But uh, within a week, I'll you get, get used, used to, to it. And if you stay relatively fit and healthy, it's not a problem. Should you get fine. used to it, you get used to it, yeah. Awesome. Um, let's have a quick look. You've already answered this, I oh, think, go on, for okay, me. Then. And I've, I think I'm right anyway. It's the GS, isn't it? What? Where you said if you could own one bike forever. Yeah, 100%. You'd go GS. Yeah, yeah. Well, one about forever. There you go. But, uh, you know, if it, one bike does fit all, Swiss Army knife, GS that's the for one. me. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. Well, yeah. that's an easy one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so what have you got kind of um, exciting plans for the channel this year and possibly bike wise this Ooh. year? Don't have to reveal, crikey, reveal too much. Crikey. No secrets. No, well, there's a few things in the pipeline that I'm pretty excited about. I've got yeah. a big trip coming up hopefully in November, which I won't say any more about because it might not happen, but I like to do one big trip a year. Last year I did uh, the Arctic Circle on the GS, which was fab, really enjoyed that. Yeah. Got another big trip coming up this year, uh, as I say November, so really looking forward to that. Uh, got some bike reviews coming up that I'm pretty excited about. Um, I'm just trying to think actually which uh, what I've got, uh, well I won't tell you what they are. The amount of happen, videos but, uh, is incredible by the way. <laughs> I mean we were talking just beforehand and Andy showed me the videos that are like planned and staged, some already done, and it is like a mastermind. It is incredible. Economy, You've got so. spreadsheets. He's got it all. So there's some amazing content. I've well, learned in this out. YouTube YouTube game, you have to be organised. Yeah. And um, you know, I try and put out at least. Did you two hear videos that, Terry? You have to be organised. <laughs> the man behind the camera. One day again, we're going to show his face. He's he's not. He's a bit shy, aren't you, Tez? But don't worry about it. One day we'll get him nice and organised first, though. Um, and then yeah. So out of the. God, I was going to say, let's. I'll tell you what, I'm going to trash one of these bikes okay, for you because okay. I have free. I forgot that you had this street triple, so yeah. I'm going to take away. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to take away the GS. Right. Because I know you really like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So out of the Street Triple, yeah. Panigale, yeah. and the CRF, yeah. if you had to blow one up, right. sell one, and then keep one, which would it be? Out of just those three? Yeah. It's, it's the old I'm glad you said old. that because if you'd just basically gone, oh, that's easy, bam, bam, bang, that would be it. Because this yeah. is our last. Well, question, well, the problem is, it's a bit like you know, who's your favourite child? Which I could give you an answer for. Yeah, no, obviously. I really. um, well, you've already told. <laughs> me, <isn't> <laughs> uh, yeah, tricky one. Um, I guess the logical answer would be I'd blow the CRF up, okay. even though that's the most fun per buck because it's the cheapest. I could easily or more easily okay. save up and get another one. <laughs> okay. So uh, whereas the Panigale is a bit more expensive and similarly the Street Triple between the two. So purely on monetary grounds, I'd lose that because I've got a sound chance of saving up to buy another one. Right. But yeah. as I think I mentioned, uh, so in terms of- So this up, which ones get sold? Are you going to sell the Panigale? Uh, well, well, if that's gone and the GS is out of the question, then actually day to day, the Street Triple makes more sense there than the Panigale for sure. So, yeah. the so I'd end up with the Street Triple. You and very cleverly go, wangled me yeah, down to and that. now we're actually gonna go and blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. So, any more videos? Obviously, the Miss and Fly, huge UK motor vlogger. Go to his channel. Go to his Instagram as well. Twitter, Facebook. He's got it all. Um, go and have a look. Uh, really interesting uh, to speak to Andy. I've known him for a long time. He's a great guy in general as well. Not trying to just be nice to you. Very much. Well, I've just got to say. You can be nice. I'm just yeah, saying it for the camera. That's all. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, and any more kind of um, interviews. We're going to be doing a shed load more in shooting, motorsport, industry, music, all sorts, and some vlogs. So come and check out our channel, Team CFG. And otherwise, that's it. Brilliant. There See you, you soon. Cheerio. <laughs> Love the cheerio. Great. <laughs>